Hi everyone, welcome back to Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today I am super excited because we are doing how to crop a blazer no sew edition. I've seen, I watched a bunch of tutorials because I'm gonna be honest, I started off this project trying to do a sewing tutorial just like I normally do. OMG, I hate when simple projects just take forever ticks me off. But then I was like, why am I going over and over and over again trying to get this right, watching other people's tutorials when probably nobody's done a tutorial on how to do it no so and how to make it look professional no so. Okay, first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. So that's what we're gonna do today. Absolutely no sewing, not even any hand sewing. So I hope you guys are so excited. We're gonna get right into it. All right, so we are going to start off with this blazer. This blazer is a wool blazer, very classic blazer. Something that I found at the thrift store. Um, yeah, I washed it just as it is. Didn't check the pockets. Always check the pockets of your blazers. You never know what's gonna be in there. A friend of a friend found money in the pocket, a lot of money, like over a thousand dollars in the pocket of a fur coat or some type of coat that she bought. So check your pockets. But anyway, I didn't find anything good in these pockets. <laughs> no such luck but the blazer itself is great and I love that this blazer has like it goes in on the sides that makes it perfect for this type I mean there's two type of crop blazers that I've seen there's ones that have like a little bit of a fit um, a form fit to them and then there's the boxy one so I'm gonna go with the one that has a little bit more of a form fit to it for this particular one I'm actually going to crop it to like right underneath the button to right here so of course to leave seam allowance to make the bottom of it look professional we're gonna crop it to this line right here which is right above the pockets so I'm gonna take it to the table and cut it off all the way around here and I'm going to cut both the outer layer of fabric and the lining as well if yours doesn't have lines you can just take a uh, measuring tape up from the bottom uh, and add pins and then cut along where the pins are and we are going to move this out of the way for another very special project. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. We are on our way to 100,000 subscribers. You gotta get there so soon. And I know we can do it. So definitely share this video with anyone, everyone on your social media so that they know all the amazing things that's going on here. And I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, so for this project, I am simply, instead of a sewing machine, I am going to use heat and bond. You can absolutely use hem tape, um, but I don't know if hem tape comes in a light form. And with the hem tape, sometimes I feel like it makes the hem stiff and I don't want the hem to be stiff at all. I want it to move just like it, as if it was sewn. So I'm gonna use this heat and bond light. And you're also going to need an iron and you know some type of ironing board. I'm using my little mini ironing board, which is like for sleeves. Um, and stuff like that. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is iron in our hem. To make sure that it turns out even, we'll add pins all along the edge. But the lining does need to be a bit shorter, so I'll add those pins a little bit higher. All right, so that's actually what this little tool is for. So I'm gonna use this instead of the cutting board. All right, so I'm doing one inch. Put that there. And I'm actually using a sewing gauge for this. You can use a regular ruler, but I find it helpful. And then you can just put it against there, add the pin, go to the next section, and add the pin. And then I am doing an inch and a half for the lining part. And we are going to iron these down. And this way, it'll make sure that all of our ironing is the same width all the way across. On the casing, add a pin on each layer, front layer and back layer. All right, so now we are going to iron everything in place. I actually prefer to iron, not the top of the pants. So I'm gonna do it like this. As the hem starts to set, you can take the pins out. And you wanna do the same thing for the lining, but you want to definitely be careful because this lining um, will burn. Trust me, I did it. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you wanna lightly iron that or you wanna get another piece of fabric to lay over it. I use a piece of paper because that's what I had closest. See? We wanna iron that in all the way along the edge. And then on the end, we wanna fold it in. You wanna make sure that that's all the way in there and that these are even. All right, so I have my heat and bond, a piece of it actually, from a previous package. And what I want to do is just cut off little strips with my paper scissors, not my sewing scissors. If you grew up with somebody who sews, then you know that you cannot use sewing scissors for paper stuff. It'll dull your scissors, and then you won't be able to cut fabric like you want to. Next, we have our blazer. So we're gonna put the tape in, hem tape or the heat and bond, and we're gonna sew it on one, I mean, we're gonna iron it on one side first. But you wanna make sure that the heat and bond is gonna be covered by your lining. So you probably should actually um, iron it. I keep saying so, iron it to the lining part first, cause it's the higher section. And you wanna make sure that this part is ironed back that way. And if it's not acting right, maybe add a pin. And actually what I'm gonna do for the facing part, I'm gonna cut just the part that is the size of the facing. I'm gonna iron that part in first. I actually think you're not supposed to use sting for this. Let's read the instructions. Yep, it says no sting. So read the instructions. And if you guys are ever getting stuck or you want to see other people's inspiration, the other subscribers on this channel, the things that they are doing, definitely join my Facebook group. The link is in the description box. You will not regret it and it's free. And I'm just gonna do it in little sections to make sure I get it placed properly. Yes, nice and flexible. That's what I wanted. All right, so once you have the whole thing all along the edge with the hem tape or the heat and bond, you can go ahead and peel off that first layer and it should reveal a shiny edge. All right, then you can fold it in half. I actually wanna do it on this side. And you can begin ironing it close. And you actually don't want to pull that lining taut. You want to leave a little bit of slack in that lining because if you pull it to be exactly the same length as the outer uh, fabric, it's going to pull. You're gonna get some pulling once you put it on. So make sure you leave some slack in that lining fabric. So pull that, ed that edge up just a little bit more, a little bit more even than I did. And um, it'll make sure that you don't have any pulling at the end. All right, I'm giving it the finger test to make sure there's no seams open along the edge. And now, I have my blazer. The hem looks professional. You don't see any seams. And it's nice and lightweight. It's not stiff. And hey, I want to let you guys know that we are about to start doing live up cycles once a month where we'll take one of my projects and all do it together live, like on Google Hangouts. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that join button below. All right, here's how it turned out. I am over the moon. It's just a simple little prop blazer that didn't take any sewing, but my gosh, you know, the impact is amazing. I decided to style it with a lace tank top and my military cargo pants. If you guys remember, these are the pants that I added the denim pockets to. However, they were the only thing that went perfectly with this blazer for a video lookbook. And so I quickly took my same ripper and took all of those pockets off. But that's the amazing thing about upcycling, like, hey, it doesn't even matter. This outfit turned out perfect and I'm so happy. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know definitely if you're enjoying this style of video. All right, so I hope you guys have enjoyed that. You do not want to miss what I do with the bottom of that blazer. That is just a big hint, I promise you. It's the very next video after this. You do not want to miss it. If I've already done it, it'll be linked right here. But if I haven't, 
definitely subscribe so you don't miss it. You want to see that it's amazing. It's something right off the runway, inspired by the runway for spring, summer 2020. So I hope you guys uh, are excited for it. There's a whole host of other videos for you to watch right here. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.